Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will see uh, how to set up a multi node cluster in Azure Databricks. Okay. Once you open the workspace, you can see lot of options in left side. Workspace repos, data computer. You can create a cluster by going here, compute, or you can click on new. Here also cluster you can select. Anything is fine. I will go with the compute option. If you click on compute, you can see number of options. All purpose compute, job compute, polls. Okay. In which scenario we will create all purpose compute means all purpose compute means for development purpose we can create all purpose clusters. Okay. So it is bit costly. Uh, one DBU, one Databricks unit will cost 0 0.4 dollars. Then job computer, job computer is, the job cluster is for a specific job. For example, once uh, development is done in production, you are uh, scheduling some job. For a third particular job, you can create one job cluster and assign to that uh, particular job. What is the advantage means? Once job starts, uh, this cluster automatically it will start. Once job is terminated, that is completed, this job also, this job cluster also will be terminated. And the uh, DBUs that the cost will be very less 0.07 dollars per DBU and uh, pools why we will use pools uh, actually to reduce the cluster start time we will use the pools if you create a pool uh, okay that uh, how many nodes you are going to select uh, that many nodes will be readily available to execute the your job okay so it will not take much time to start uh, because already it is available that the, those servers will be available in the pool so whenever it requires sir, automatically it will spin up for you to execute your job. Once we will create a pool, we will pool we will assign uh, to the cluster. Okay. So that we will see in some other video. In this uh, video we will focus on this all purpose cluster. How to create all purpose cluster how to do capacity, uh, how to estimate that capacity and all. So, select this all-purpose cluster, create cluster, okay. So, here, uh, four, you can see four options in policy, unrestricted, personal compute, power user compute, legacy shared compute. So, these are all new, newly added features. Uh, so, for, for now, we will go ahead with the unrestricted only, okay. So, here, uh, if you see modes, uh, multi-node, single node. If you select single node, you can see only one, one driver, okay, one node with the 14 GB memory, four cores. So, this is for a single user. If you want to some practice purpose and all, you can give, you can create single node. Cluster, okay. Access mode, if you see here, three access modes, single user, shared user, no isolation shared. So, single user means you can select this single user. In the project, you are setting, set, setting up a cluster, you need to select a no isolation shared, okay. So, that all developers can develop their, you use their, that cluster, okay. That is nothing but a no isolation shared. We have to select a no isolation shared. Okay. And uh, this is single, single node. If you select a multi node, okay, multi node, if you select multi node, you can see multiple nodes means multiple nodes you can select. Multiple nodes you can attach to the cluster. If you select a single node, one node, one cluster, one server only you can attach to the uh, cluster. Okay. Next, uh, runtime environment. Runtime environment, if you select, uh, 
two tech already I have explained two two will be there standard ML okay standard is for data engineering projects okay ML for ML separately runtime uh, in versions will be available okay this is the GPU GPU related clusters will they will use for ML okay this is for data science for now we will select standard in standard you can see 12.2 LTS LTS nothing but long term support wherever you can see latest LTS that you need to select by default if you see here I didn't select anything but it got it is selected LTS okay LTS nothing but the long term support <coughs> need to select the runtime environment because Databricks is developed using Scala so what <coughs> Databricks is developed using Scala this is internal architecture internal spark version is 3.3.2 Scala 2.1 okay runtime environment we have to select worker type when it comes to the worker type, so uh, worker types in cluster size we need to select here. So, how many what type of cluster you want? Many are there that we will make separate video. In this, we will go ahead with the standard uh, cluster, standard clusters. Okay, standard clusters one cluster, one server, one worker node will have 14 GB memory, 4 cores, 14 GB memory. Four cores. So if you if you select here uh, enable auto scaling, uh, so minimum is two worker nodes, maximum is how many you are mentioning here? I will mention three worker nodes. Okay, three worker nodes uh, I will mention from two to three worker nodes you can use for to execute your job. Okay. Maximum worker nodes means it can that scale based on that requirement necessity it can scale up to maximum three worker nodes. So what is the if you same uh, standard D3 V2 14 GB memory four cores uh, with the maximum three worker nodes means what is the capacity of that uh, what is the capacity of that cluster uh? one node. One worker node will have 14 GB memory, four cores. So total three worker nodes, right? So my capacity of this cluster is 14 into 3. Okay. So you can see here 14 into 3. 14 into 3, 42 GB memory and 4 into 3, 12 cores. So, total capacity of this cluster is 12 cores of 42 GB memory. Okay, so that's how we need to calculate based on what is your input data, how much data you are going to handle based on that. We will select this cluster. Okay, driver type also currently I am selecting as same as. 40 GB memory for course. If you can, if you if you disable the data scaling, you can see workers only. That uh, minimum maximum you cannot select. Okay. If you what is advantage if you select enable auto scale means it will vary. It will vary from what is minimum number of workers you need your job need up to what limit you can scale that cluster when it is required. That is the difference between auto uh, scaling. Okay, if I if I deselect this enable auto scaling, uh, and I am giving three nodes, three workers. So then, so your, your cluster capacity is uh, three uh, forty two GB memory and uh, twelve cores. Okay. So for so <coughs> let me open. Cluster 
capacity equal to what we have given the 14 GB memory 14 into so 3 work notes I have selected right so 14 into 3 42 GB RAM and then cores how many cores 4 cores 4 into each each node has 4 uh, cores 4 into 3 so 3 nodes right so 12 cores CPU ok this is our cluster capacity now how internally it will execute so so 30 GB 42 GB RAM it is uh, using 12 cores for processing ok now each each core each uh, <coughs> for example uh, your job will be internally your job will be divided into number of partition based on block size right so how internally that task will be executed in the executor this is the uh, flow actually so cluster manager in previous video we have seen uh, what is uh, the internal architecture cluster manager will request uh, okay uh, will check for uh, uh, executors to execute that uh, particular task uh, assigned by the spark context uh, spark context will give uh, will raise request to the uh, cluster manager as i need uh, capacity uh, cl clusters to execute uh, my job okay Okay, internally that uh, cluster manager will assign uh, check that which are the executors available, it will assign the task. So, that whatever uh, job taken by the Spark context, that job will be divided into number of uh, stages. Each job will be data pixel divided into number of stages. Okay, each stage again divided into number of uh, tasks, task 1, task 2. If you see in this uh, diagram, job is divided into three stages. Stage 1 divided into two tasks, task 1, task 2. Again, stage 2 divided into task 3, task 4. This task, so here uh, we have created uh, we have created uh, three workers nodes, right? With uh, four cores each. This will look like this. This is the executor. Four cores means internally four slots will be available. Four slots. Slot is nothing but a, slot is nothing but a unused capacity of a cluster. So how many slots are there? That many uh, that many tasks it will handle parallelly. Okay. Now these four tasks uh, will execute in this uh, executor one. Four slots. Okay. Each task will be assigned to the one slot that will execute. Now, what is the cluster? For example, one job I have created, job one, that has four tasks. Okay, that four tasks, that four tasks will be executed by the executor, this executor, slot one. Task one will be executed in task slot one, task two executed in slot two, task three executed in slot three, task four executed in slot four. Okay. For example, it is a some 15 20 minute job, maybe it is up, uh, running. Okay, four tasks are running in the this node executor one. Okay, what is the left leftover capacity? Executor two, executor three, four, eight slots are uh, empty. Means uh, that uh, so next job, if someone some other developer runs. Uh, that the task will be taken by the these two executors, executor 2, executor 3. Okay. Like that, uh, kernel it is uh, processing. Okay. Internally, it will process like that. For example, uh, each, what is our cluster uh, capacity? 42 GB RAM. 42 GB RAM. Okay. What uh, if the data comes 100 GB? 100 GB data comes, no? How it will process? Uh, that 100 GB we divide and uh, parallelly each number of tasks, task, all the tasks
task will be assigned to the particular slots. Okay. So task one, slot one, like that. How many? For example, here twelve slots are there. Twelve tasks at a time it will take. Okay. And the remaining tasks will be waiting in the queue. Okay. Once these twelve slots, twelve tasks are completed, then remaining uh, uh, next task it will take. Like that. Uh, just uh, based on your memory, it will manage. Okay, execution will take place. Okay. So, job one, for example, hundred as hundred GB came out. So, hundred GB data it will divide into uh, some, for example, uh, some twenty uh, four twenty uh, four tasks. Only we have twelve slots. Twelve tasks will execute parallelly. Remaining twelve slots will be waiting in queue. Once this execution is done, then remaining first slot will be taken by the cluster. Like that, the uh, slots uh, will execute the tasks. Okay. What is cluster availability? Okay. Cluster availability is nothing but the total number of cores. How many total number of cores? Cluster total cores means this is the cluster availability. Okay. Total cluster capacity means 42 GB RAM and 42 cores. Okay, and uh, this is the auto scaling. Auto scaling means uh, you plan to assign a minimum worker or micro option nodes. What is the capacity of uh, what is the maximum capacity? If you give like this auto scaling to minimum workers, uh, eight maximum workers, uh, 112 GB up to 112 GB, it will handle if you enable auto scaling. If we get uh, 500 GB, how uh, whatever I explained uh, in the diagram, uh, first uh, 112 GB it will process, uh, remaining it will be in queue. Once that is done, again next uh, task will come, it will uh, execute like that, uh, it will work. Okay. Terminate after 120 minutes. So if you create uh, uh, all purpose cluster, no, we have to do the time. Uh, to terminate. Job cluster automatically when job ends, it will terminate. But here we have to give some 30 minutes, 50 minutes. Unnecessarily, if you are not running anything, if you give 120 by default, 120 minutes, nothing but 2 hours, uh, that child it will be uh, wastage of your resources, right? So, so usually in the projects, we will give uh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes after we need to Terminate the last cluster. Okay. This is the uh, cluster uh, multi-node cluster setup uh, and internal uh, mechanism. Based on your input to data size, okay, uh, how much data you are going to handle every day. Based on that, uh, you will select. You can select the cluster. Okay. Thanks for watching.